Our scripture reading this evening comes from John 13, verses 1 through 17. <clears throat> it was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist, and after that he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part of me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you, for he knew he was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you, he asked. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. And this ends the scripture reading for this evening. So this evening, as we come together for Monday, Thursday, we pause to take time to consider the Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples. And we see how Jesus, in our scripture today, we see how he's trying to set his disciples on a course to follow once he has left. Now, we know what is in store for Jesus the next day. We know that he is going to be betrayed, tortured, and crucified. See, we know what's going to happen, and we know that he knows what's going to happen. But the disciples, with perhaps the exclusion of Judas, do not know what is going to happen. For them, they must have been wondering, why is he doing these things today? Is this a new way of doing Passover? Should we now make sure that we wash each, wash each other's feet instead of allowing the servants to do it? Should we bless the cup and the bread in the way that he does in the name of Jesus going forward? You can see that this was confusing for the disciples. When Jesus goes to wash their feet, Peter tells him, Oh no, not me, Lord, you will never wash my feet because I am not worthy of that honor. And then Jesus responds to him that unless you let me wash your feet, you have no place with me. Peter immediately realizes his mistake and says, please wash all of me then, not just my feet, Lord. Now, when we think about what Jesus was doing this night, we can see how he was trying to get the disciples to understand that they were to serve others. As he is serving them the cup and the bread, he tells the disciples that when they take the bread and cup, in the future they should do so in remembrance of him. Do so in a way that reminds you of all that I, Jesus, have done for you. Take this meal in a way that reminds you of what Jesus would do. You know, we see that in 
the church so often in remembrance of me. If we look up here this evening, we'll see it. Maybe you can read that embroidered up there. It says, in remembrance of me. Um, and we, we do that throughout each time we take communion. It's part of our liturgy to do so in remembrance of Jesus. And I think that you could also put that in another way as well. See, as I was growing up, it was pop popular to have a bracelet that said, WWJD, what would Jesus do, right? Is what it stood for. And we were to wear them uh, so that when we came to a difficult choice, we would stop and say to ourselves, what would Jesus do in this situation? A way of reminding us or helping us to remember what Jesus would do. So when I think about what Jesus did and what I should do, I need to understand something very quickly. I am not Jesus. And I know that seems like a weird thing to have to remember or remind yourself of that you're not Jesus, but sometimes I think we try to take things on in a way that Jesus would take them on and we're simply not capable. For example, what would Jesus do? He would perform a miracle. He would heal the blind and he would heal the lame. So I should do the same. Now, I'm not saying the Holy Spirit doesn't come and allow people to heal, um, but I can tell you that I don't seem to have that particular gift. So for me to work a miracle of healing is something that's not going to happen. So what I think I need to think about, or what we need to think about, what Jesus would do in a situation, we have to consider our own limitations. Now, the story of the Last Supper is something that helps us understand what Jesus would do. Well, what would he do? He would stop and wash the feet of those that were his followers. He would show them love and care for, doing, by, for them by doing a job that by all measures is unpleasant. What would Jesus do? Well, in the end of this chapter, and we saw this in our opening prayer this evening too, he would tell the disciples that they are to love one another as he has loved them to love one another as he has loved them so that others would know that they were his disciples by the way that they loved one another. When we ask ourselves, what would Jesus do? Jesus would love. He would love all of us enough to sacrifice his life for us. He would ask that we love one another in this way as well. You see, we might not be miracle work workers, but we are capable of being workers in his name. We can serve others the way that he did. We might, we might not be called to lay down our lives for someone else, but we can love others as he loved us. That is what Jesus would do. That is what Jesus did do. So let us do our best to live our lives in remembrance of him by serving and loving others. Amen.